My name is Drew Larson. I'm 23. I'm based out of Austin, Texas, and this is Financial Audit. What do you do for a living in Austin, Texas? So I'm a video producer and editor for a slime company, but we also do like social media content as well. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. So in a similar field. Yes. Yes. We like, we like media. We like production. What do you make right now? Uh, I'm just a little over 56 a year. Okay. Do you feel that's pretty good for your position in this town? For Yeah, I would say just because I moved from out of state. I moved from Cleveland. So going from Cleveland to here, I got a pretty big pay bump. So I was pretty okay with it. Did you it. move here for the job from Cleveland? Yeah. What were you doing in Cleveland for a So living? I was a video producer for an IT company out there. I previously lived in Los Angeles, but I moved back home because, well, Los Angeles takes all your money. So uh, yeah. I moved back home to save up a little bit so I could either move to back to LA or to Austin. Like so you did city. the classic move from the Midwest to LA to try to make it in the film industry. And then oh, yeah. It, oh, yeah. And boy, did I fall straight on my face like everyone else that tries. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you found it here and you're only 23. 23 is freaking young and you're doing pretty well in a field you actually want to did you go and study school or did you study film and everything like that yeah so i went to uh, ohio university for uh integrated media and media production and stuff the party school of the usa yeah we are um it's not as fun as you think it's (laughs) it's it's okay it's it's cool but yeah but yeah i went there minored in social media forensic chemistry a couple other things here there i had a a lot of weird interests and uh ended up just doing media like full-time like this is what i'm gonna focus on and now we're here Awesome. Well, congratulations on that. How long have you been here? Uh, I think like five, six months. Not too long. Okay. Well, Relatively newer. Okay. And speaking of being newer, be a new subscriber. Click subscribe. It's fun. He's a subscriber. I am a subscriber and I love the channel. We're trying to get to 250,000 subscribers. So please consider subscribing. Before we jump into your finances, I want to hear from your position, from your perspective, what do you think your financial situation is? I think I am stable, but like I could do more for the future. Like I'm doing okay right now. I don't spend more than I make for the most part, but I know I should be doing more like putting stuff towards future investing, having more in like retirement and stuff like that. I don't think I'm doing that well enough. Well, not spending more than you make is like the most basic of thresholds to hopefully oh, yeah, make it over. Right? Are you spending as much as you make? No, I'm still able to put away in savings. This past month, which of course everyone says on the show, well, this past month, but this past month I have relapsed because I used to I'm not good with shopping for like clothes and shoes. I have a little bit of a shopping addiction, but we okay. kind of curved it. And coming up, I got my savings back up after moving. And since then, it's been like a past month of like, well, since I got my savings back up, but looking back. So you drained your savings to move? Uh, Yeah, most. Not all of it, but a good amount. What have you gotten it back up to? Uh, I got it back up to 10K. 10K. Okay, pretty comfortable there. Mm -hmm. And then what are your downfalls, debts and stuff like that? So I have 20,000 of student debt, which isn't great. Could be worse. So I'm like dealing with that. Federal, private? Uh, federal. Okay. So it could be worse. Uh, and I know we're not getting that tax break. Wish, but not going to happen. Oh. Or the... Uh, forgiveness. Yeah, yeah, forgiveness. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, not getting that. But other than that, uh, I got some medical bills that float around every now and then, some collections mm. that pop up. Um, mm. What? Yeah. You say that just like a thing just passing by when I said describe your financial situation, medical bills and uh, collections didn't even pop up until like I... Yeah. So I have this... So... When I was in college, my dad was like, oh, send us the medical bill since you're still like in college and you're going to school. We'll help you with medical stuff. And he has this uh, bad habit of shredding things when they come in the mail. So it wasn't until right before I moved to L.A., I look at my credit card and I'm like, oh, my credit score is trash and I have nine collections worth five thousand dollars. Uh Oh, so, yeah, had to deal with well, that. What have you when when was that? When that did was, you find that out? That was two years ago, right before I moved to L.A. Since then, well, we, I haven't done anything. Have you done anything? Yes. So oh. the 5,000 has been paid off, but two and a half just popped back up again because they're still acquiring from all those years because it takes a while for them to get to debt collectors and stuff. So do you know what's out there that's not gone to debt collectors yet? Honestly, I have no idea. Uh, was it all with one institution? Uh, it's a couple. Most of them went through one. It's like one creditor because it's all like from the Cleveland Akron area of like hospitals. So it yeah. all goes through like one. Have you tried to get in contact with them? Just yeah. to see? And? Uh, I So far, I've paid off everything that they have. So I want to take a brief moment to thank today's episode sponsor, SoFi. SoFi is a leading mobile first personal finance company. And they're dedicated to assisting you with all your banking, borrowing, and investing needs. And what they help with today can help you save so much money on your credit card debt. We've seen people time and time and time and time again on this show have insane, insane 30% interest rates or even higher on their credit cards. And they are making no progress. 
That's where today SoFi can help with a personal loan consolidating those credit cards to a lower fixed rate. With their personal loans, you can expect fast approval, ensuring quick access to the money you need, sometimes even on the same day. Now, of course, don't think that just because that's gone over to a personal loan that you shouldn't make any more progress. No one's saying that. But having it go down from 30% insane interest, which could even go higher if interest rates go higher, having a fixed rate will save you so much money over the long term. So check them out today by going to sofi.com forward slash Caleb Hammer. And the best part to see if their rates are competitive for you, it has no impact on your credit score. So that's sofi.com forward slash Caleb Hammer. Use the link in the description below. So I have so nothing else should be going to collections. Yeah, nothing else should. I still have four collections on my credit like right now because it hasn't been cleared yet, but I just recently made a payment for that. So once I think they said like mid-March rolls around, they should be able to pull it off. And then all that will be left is 2,500? No, that's that'll be gone. That's recently paid. So there'll be nothing. There'll be nothing after this last one to my knowledge, but I have no idea if there's going to be another random medical bill that pops up from like four years ago where they just mm. now got to debt collectors is the problem. So I've called as many hospitals as I can to check for the bills, but sometimes one place here squeaks through the cracks. And so your main situation is spending potential debt that could pop up into collections from medical debt yeah. and uh, the student loans, which are on pause right now because they're all federal. Mm -hmm. What was the medical issues you were dealing with? So I have an autoimmune disease called ulcerative colitis and it went undiagnosed for like four years. Mm -hmm. So my condition got really, really bad and it just took forever for doctors to figure it out. And I think I had to go to like five different specialists and finally they diagnosed it and I got on a treatment, but it took so long with so many tests, procedures and stuff just to figure that out. So that kind of took a lot of money. Sure. Now, I don't think I have access to your savings because I don't see anything with $10,000 in it. You only sent me two things. Uh, it's in, it should be the Huntington. It should be Premier Savings. Is it Huntington. in there? Yeah, it's in there. Oh, you're right in. It is in there. I was wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I promise can, I have money somewhere. <laughs> we have a checking account. So beginning balance, 1818 Okay. $2,000 ending balance. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you're pretty much everything's going out that's coming in. Pretty much, except for just a couple hundred bucks. But credits five thousand nine hundred fourteen, debits five thousand seven hundred twenty three. So, I mean, that's not fantastic. But I guess it depends where it's going. And then in was Ven Venmo's from other people. And then are you paid through QuickBooks then? Yeah, I'm paid by QuickBooks. And then when usually the Venmo things are either groceries because me and my girlfriend. Uh, I cover rent and everything, and then she does groceries, and then mm -hmm. we Venmo each other to do, like half. So if oh, there's a Venmo okay. in, uh, usually that'll be like her half the payment, or if I'm Venmoing out, it's usually like HEB or something for like groceries. Gotcha. And then in here, so let's see how long I have to scroll to see anything that's not unnecessary. I guess we can call Walgreens unnecessary, but before that we had all these DoorDashes and PlayStation and Amazon and... Like yeah. donation to PBS potentially and Conva and Chick-fil-A, Starbucks, American Eagle, Amazon, Sonic, Spotify. Yeah, a lot so. of subscriptions and stuff. And my You still have a Rooster Teeth subscription? I didn't know people Yo, still had those. I've canceled that like eight times and it keeps billing. I finally called again, but like I've canceled it like I swear eight times and it keeps popping up. I'm like, why? Like it's, it's driving me crazy. So block them from the usually with most Banks, well, I know with credit cards, you for sure can, but you still should be able to mm -hmm. like block that charge from happening from the bank's side. Yeah, I definitely, if they do it again, because I called their actual support line to get that fixed. I'm like, I swear, I know I've canceled this a couple of times. If they do it again, I'm just going to have to block them. They have a support line? I think so. I called, yeah. I'm surprised Rooster Teeth can afford to have customer support at this point. Nowadays, it is. So They've completely surprised. fallen. They only have like 10, they get like. 10,000, 20,000 views of video. So sad. Which, I mean, I wouldn't complain about for videos, but they used to get like a million oh, yeah. per video. So whatever. A lot of dead subscribers. It's really sad. Yeah. And then DoorDash and Walgreens. Yeah. Is that? Walgreens might have been a uh, prescription. Yeah, I'm totally good with those. But yeah. Hollister yeah. and Poshmark, Poshmark, Slotchkeys, Poshmark. Dude, I mean, everything. I'm not going to name them all off. But we still got more PlayStation Networks and subscribe star and amazon amazon panera lululemon dick sporting goods amazon but there was there's barely any necessities in this whole thing yeah let's see that's poor page four out of six because amazon you're taking a toll road and 
eBay and Dick Sporting Goods and Anchor Bar, Amazon, eBay. This is this is insane, dude. Amazon, PlayStation Network pops up constantly. You're just buying games left and right. Peacock, you don't need that KFC, dude. This is crazy. Well, uh, X, Microsoft, Xbox, PayPal. Why are we getting Xbox and PlayStation? Because some games are exclusive for certain platforms. And oh, gaming is like my like one hobby that I really like go into other than shopping for clothes. That's kind of the bigger mm-hmm. issue. But so, yeah, every now and then I'll have PlayStation, Microsoft pop up. There's a lot of games that came out recently, unfortunately. Yeah. No, because, again, yeah. you only had an extra $200 left over. I didn't even see money like only 1000 went to savings. Mm-hmm. Like you're going <laughs> to... You're losing the best decade of your life for any potential investing right now mm-hmm. because you're spending it all on going out to eat, getting expensive clothing, and buying a bunch of video games. Like your financial situation in terms of the debt perspective is not crazy. You have twenty thousand dollars, which is you know similar to the average student loan borrower, mm-hmm. but you don't have car debt, right? No, actually. So that was one of the big hits to my savings was when I moved out here. I had to get it registered in Texas, and That's so expensive. yeah, so we had to. I had to. Pretty much, just but buy you don't have car debt. Your yeah. collections have been cleared. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the bad debts that most people normally have on the show, you do not have yet. All the money that is coming in, we're like, fine, right? But we're not gonna, you know, put it towards anything that's actually good. So you're gonna start falling behind in life, and mm-hmm. that's that's not what we want to see. And then for someone like you, because again, you spend a lot on your credit card. Money's going out. I I have put together these like resources that I'm trying to accumulate and stuff for people who are on the show and then people who are in the audience that I keep at the top of my description. Mm -hmm. And I have things like course careers there for people who need to improve their income and get a better job. But something like Fizz is perfect for you personally. Mm -hmm. It works as kind of a debit card, credit card hybrid. And I think it's perfect for you because it caps some spending. Mm. It, it caps your spending habits. And for someone who has an addiction to just spending and spending and spending and spending and spending, it's like perfect. And then it also helps with your credit score because you have a bad credit score. And we'll look at your credit, but it helps build that while setting daily caps in your spending and stuff like that. Not that anyone with spending habits should necessarily get into credit cards in the first place. This is like the one I can recommend because it actually helps people stick to budget. So that's something you should seriously look into. For sure. You yeah. just like look at the top because it doesn't require a hard inquiry or anything like that. They mm-hmm. don't look at your, it doesn't affect your credit uh, in terms of that way, but uh, just check it out. I'll, I'll send you a link or you can just look at the top of the description where the resources are, but it's seriously. I think perfect for you because guess what? Even though we're all the money's going in and out, we have two thousand three hundred thirty-five dollars spent on a credit card. Mm. Yeah, are you paying that off? Oh yeah, the uh, next pay cycle it should all be paid off, and then you'll pretty much have no money in your checking account. Yeah, at that point because you're spending everything. The credit on card, here. um, part of the credit card, I think half of that is actually the medical stuff from earlier to get the. Uh, so that's okay. That so is, you're paid with your collections on a credit card. Yeah. Because okay. I'm trying to raise the credit score, so I'm putting stuff. No, sorry, so I'm putting stuff on there to try to raise it up a little bit. Because I and have as long card. as you're just paying it off. That's yeah. All that matters. No, I have, I'm 100 percent uh, payment. Okay, and it gets you to about 25 percent of your credit limit on that card. So uh, yeah, I think I'm at 19 percent right now on Credit Karma for usage. Mm-hmm. Fidelity Properties rent. The, uh, Weinstein is uh, rent. Fidelity is the collection. The collections agency. that makes yeah. sense. What did you, 283 from Best Buy and 582 from yeah, Best Buy. You're spending your money on Yeah, it was, what? It was Let's Apple see. Watch. It was, it was 100% simple. And I know that now. I got, I got, I think I hit a certain number of my savings. I was like, I'm floating, I'm good. And it just. Yeah, but I wouldn't I feel comfortable with $10,000 personally if mm-hmm. you, if by your own admission, things from collections could just come. Yeah. Like, you have an extra level of uncertainty. Then $140 mm-hmm. from Best Buy and oh, what are you, Marriott and Austin. Oh, that was you live that, in Austin. That's when the ice storm hit, so we ended up going oh, to the hotel. Still. Okay, well, that's actually we were fair. out of power, yeah. That's actually fair, yeah. That, that was a bad storm. Yeah. So your money's just going to bull****, and you're not doing anything to actually further your life or pay off the student loans, which will start back up. Very soon. So $20,000 in student loans. I also, I don't know if I mentioned this, I have like, I think 25,000 somewhere in a, a 401k from my previous job. Okay, but, have you rolled it over yet, anywhere? Uh, no, that is the one thing. 
I, I, I've looked it up. I've tried to call ADP. They are not very helpful. I, that's one thing I need help with is that I don't know where to put that and where to have that grow. Cause sure. right, right now I think it's still vesting and stuff, but I can't add to it. I can't pull from it unless I just yeah. roll it over to something. And I have, I'm, I have no idea how to do that. Yeah. I mean, for that, I, uh, rolled over my 401k from a previous employer from ADP to fidelity fidelity mm-hmm. will give you like a sheet of how to do it super easy so i would just open up fidelity i'm uh, recommending you a lot of resources today apparently but uh fidelity is a great put, uh, place to just roll things over and i love you know working with them in general because that's where i have all my investments in in terms of the market stock market so gotcha yeah that's super simple you just give them a call and they'll, they'll help you out perfect uh but that's good obviously don't touch that oh, and then we want to can uh, I assume you don't have like a Roth IRA or IRA. No, I was going to see, cause I didn't know if I rolled it over, if I would roll it over into like a Roth IRA or something like that. And then I want to start putting away like five to 10% of my paychecks towards that as well to start building that back up. Cause my current company, well, that's a baby retirement. percentage, but yeah, yeah, you can do a better percentage. What, we'll what's, the, what's the percentage you recommend? Yeah, 20%, 20% Oh, okay. your paycheck. Yeah. I can do so that. was it a Roth 401k? Or that's, I think it was just a traditional 401k. So I know I'd probably lose, I think from, I, I wouldn't just roll over easily. So I think I'd have to pay taxes for pulling it out. You right? could just, well, don't pull it out. You can just roll it over into a traditional IRA, okay. but you can open up a Roth IRA, contribute the max 6,500 now on a yearly basis. And then probably more than that going forward. But let's talk about these student loans first. Okay. What are the interest rates on them when they start back up? I'm honestly not sure. Well, it's very important. Mm. Do you know what site they're through? Uh, EDU Financial, I believe. Is Have you logged possible. in and taken a look at them? Yes. And? But I, I don't think I remember what the... Can you log on your yeah. phone and take a look at Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's find out. Okay, so couldn't find the interest. <laughs> no. uh, great, great website they have. Mm, when you figure out the interest, things are definitely going to depend on that. Mm. Your financial situation is not very crazy or complicated right now, but let's get a, just a couple budget things under, uh, just, you know, mm. written down. What's your rent? My rent right now, my half of it is just under 900. So like, I think it's 897. Okay. And what are you currently spending on groceries on average? On average, I'd say probably like 40 to 50 a week. So let's call it like 200 for the month. We're going big. Gas, 100? I'd say, yeah, probably. 100. Uh, fill up like, eh, maybe 60. I only fill up twice. I'm hybrid, so I'd say like 75. Play it safe. Okay. Do you budget at all? Do you use a budgeting app of any kind? No. All right, just get Mint or You Need a Budget mm-hmm. or any of those. There's a lot of really good options out there. Yeah. I, I worked for when I, when I was saving up in Cleveland for a long this time, I would just put everything into savings. So like I never got used to budgeting cause I didn't need to, cause I, you know, lived at my parents' house and just mm-hmm. save. So I think I ended up getting like f- saving 15 K in nine months just to move out. And then I think after that old habits die hard. And I guess I didn't realize like without budgeting, I'm like, Oh, now that I'm paying bills and stuff and I see the money flying out. Yeah. It just, it's, it's harder not to just throw it straight into savings. We'll create you a budget and we'll throw it all on screen as well. What yeah. is, what is your car? My car is a 2016 Hyundai Elantra Limited. Okay. Great. How many miles? Uh, I'm about to say it's 60. Cool. I think I want to get you to about $15,000 in savings. Mm-hmm. Just a little extra buffer because of these medical things that have popped up. Just a little extra. And then, you know, if we go a couple of years in the future, probably want it to be $15,000 anyway. But then I think we can kind of relax on that. Yeah. Because I also, years. also want a safety fund of at least 10. My goal, I think, would be to have like 15 to 20K and then 10 in savings. But I also am working on transferring. or what, Why? To have a safe. I, I, thought, I always thought it was good to have savings and also a safety fund. So like savings, you, I don't know. Well, I just, I, it sounded good. Like investing in a retirement, sure. But you don't need like, we don't need to have like two emergency funds. Which is essentially what that is. So you, you would recommend instead doing something where you just have like a savings slash emergency fund that you put aside, don't touch, and then you put everything else into investments and stuff. Yeah. Or oh, okay. uh, you can be saving for additional things. Like if you're saving for a new car purchase or well, you're saving for a new house. I think that's what I was thinking. But not just having just savings just sitting there. I meant, uh, yeah, maybe I, I should have clarified that. I meant savings like towards a house because my, me and my okay, girlfriend yeah, are so there's to, a yeah. Okay. If there's a goal, don't get a house until you guys are married together. Oh, absolutely. That doesn't make yeah. sense. Um, but... Okay, cool. So looks like you're getting, are you getting paid bi-weekly, semi-monthly? Uh, bi-weekly. So, okay. And because of that, we have to do, I prefer semi-monthly. It makes more sense mathematically, but it's okay. Monthly basis, 
on average, coming into your checking account, because some will be a little more, $3,915. The average that hits your checking account. Cool? That sounds about right, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I think it's a little above. Yeah, no, that, no, that makes sense. Never no, mind, yeah, I mean, my bad. Sometimes you'll have, the, the nice thing about bi-weekly is sometimes you'll have a triple paycheck month. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, on average, this is. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. So I guess with that. Yeah, my last job was, I think, semi-monthly, and I kind of like that a little bit better. It's easier to calculate things. It is. It's easier to budget. Mm. Yeah, 23% is going to rent, so I'm okay with that. Okay, so when building a budget, you're going to put $900 for rent. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yep, yep. So we do that. Then utilities? Uh, 125 you're going to put 125 for utilities. Then you're going to put $200 for groceries. Then you're going to put $75 for gas. Now, of this $39.15, you are going to put $783 minimum on a monthly basis to savings or investing of some kind. And then, very exciting thing here. You have a thousand one hundred seventy four dollars and five cents or in fifty cents for fun of whatever you want. Now, what you could do, and what I would prefer to do, a thousand one hundred seventy four actually goes to saving and investing, and seven hundred eighty three goes to fun. I'm totally cool flipping that. But it uh, that is up to you as long as you're at least doing twenty percent of your post tax. Gotcha. I'm chilling. So let's just make sure this all adds up and gives you a little bit of wiggle room 75 200 oh uh, uh yeah it does cool you have a leftover so what other needs can you think of i mean insurance is probably through work right yeah and it's taken before we see the money okay yeah and i think car insurance car insurance be. how much a month uh a quarter? i think like 150 160 around there okay We'll call it 160. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's 150, but it's 160 because renter's insurance is like $12 All right. on top of that. We'll so. just call it that. Then. Yeah, 160 for insurance. For different insurances. Cool. So now, if you follow 50, 30, 20, 50% on needs, 30% on wants, 20% on savings, you actually did not hit the full 50% on needs. We're actually going to add an additional 100. Mm-hmm. For into your budget for things like toilet paper and all that kind of necessities. That yeah, all stuff. the extra necessities. Where would we put out of curiosity? Where would you like budget like medication and stuff? Because I do get have that. Okay, how much on a monthly basis? Uh, needs definitely needs. Yeah, monthly basis. I'd say probably fifty to seventy five dollars. We'll call it seventy five. All right. For medication now. Cool. So now we're at $3,592.50. Now what you're doing when you're writing out these budget categories in Mentor, you need a budget, you're putting that number in there. Mm -hmm. And then when things are happening, say $1,174 are coming to fun, but two and a half weeks into a month, you're at $1,000 of fun. You can't spend more than $174 of fun Mm -hmm. in that month, more for the remainder of the month. But at this time, for your average that is coming in, you have an extra $322. So you can distribute, because you're spending less than your 50% allocated on needs, you're spending less of that pie, on that part of the pie, you can allocate that money to a different portion. Mm -hmm. Preferably investing. But investing more minimum, 783. And then this extra, you can divert to other places. You can put some towards fun. You can put some towards... You know, anything. Mm. So that is like the leftover little chunk of the pie of your income. And maybe split it between fun and savings. It's Mm. up to you. I don't care. But for the next $5,000 that you need to put in your emergency fund, and then always have like a couple thousand in your checking. Right. If you do the $783 a month, that will take you uh, uh, just over six months to do. And then you can start investing. Mm. So that's why, at least for now, I would rather probably have, and the reason, so you do have an emergency fund. Usually it's an emergency not to have a fully funded emergency fund, but I think you do in your situation. We just want a little extra buffer yeah. because of the random stuff that has been happening with the medical bills. So we're still allowing fun at this time because it's not like 
uber critical. Mm. Ooh, like, yeah, but it'll just help in the future if things uh, were to happen. I went uber critical when I was back in Ohio saving up. That, that was when I was like, good. I am so screwed. Very good. So, yeah, uh, you can get there quicker if you want or don't. But at that point, you'll easily, once that emergency fund is fully funded at 15000 you'll easily be able to max out your Roth IRA on a yearly basis mm -hmm. since you don't have a 401k. Uh, 401k, we're definitely uh, contributing more. And of course, you have more left over anyway in terms of your, your investing category when it comes to maxing out your Roth IRA. So you're just putting that into a, like a brokerage gotcha. of some kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and again, you can put it in the same funds. Um, you know, I don't give investing advice here, but what do I do? I put my money into things like good index funds, S&P 500. Mm. Is an example that's the one that. that I know. Like I have a buddy that does a lot of finance and he said S and P 500. He's like, just put it's it in classic. There. Yeah. Classic. Uh, but that's really much it. That's, that's pretty much it. What's necessary right now is just getting your spending under the control, yeah. getting these budgets. Now what does change? And I said, things are dependent on the student loans. Yeah. If 20,000, huh? Okay. If the interest rate is above 5%, like 5% or higher, mm. I would take 10 of the $15,000 in savings to it, hit it, and then you have $5,000 left. And then you're putting all your fund money and investment money towards paying it off gotcha. as quick as possible, paying off the additional $10,000. And you would do that in this instance within six months. Really? And then you could have fun again. Yeah, because you'd have $10,000 left. I can and two, 2000 you can put towards the 2000 you'd have for fun and savings combined. You'd put all of that towards the student loans. And then yeah. it'd be paid off in six months. But if if it's 4% or below or, you know, just below that 5% as well, definitely 4% or below, I wouldn't pay it off early. I'd just be doing minimum monthly payments. Because I think, if I remember correctly, because now I'm thinking more and more about it, I know, I think they kind of got split because I know most of them are like at 3%, but I think like there's two for the my last two semesters were like 5%. I think there's like fluctuating. Then, yep, just pay I those. I know they're not above like five point. I think it was like 5.2 or something like that. I think it was the highest. Okay, whatever those ones are, cut a check from them from your savings, mm -hmm. from your emergency fund, and then rebuild that emergency fund as quick as you can, and then you're allowed to have fun again. Mm -hmm. So again, that's where things are dependent on the student loans. And gotcha. since we don't have those numbers in front of us in terms of interest rates, when they resume, that that's the stipulation. Gotcha. So the budget we laid out, that's what's working. Just put it in an app. Make sure you're tracking every single purchase. Don't spend over the categories and prioritize where your money is going so you can take advantage of the remaining seven years of the best decade of your life for investing. We need to start taking care of this now. So that's my thoughts. You know, not a crazy financial situation in general, not a crazy long episode, but if you have any final questions or thoughts, I guess yours. I have one more or I might have more, but one that's on my head is like, if I did want to put, start like saving for like a house for mm -hmm. example, just cause I know like Austin's getting more and more expensive. And yeah. like, I know the, the housing market is kind of getting better, but I, I want to meet it in the middle where it gets a little better, but before Austin like shoots up in price. So right. how much would you say is good for like a down payment? And also like how much would you, or like how much would you put towards that? Like as a percentage? wise? Yeah, I would love you to get as close to 20% down as you can. It's hard in a very expensive market like Austin. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it'll be you and your girlfriend, which will be, you know, married once you guys go into the situation 100%. of getting on a mortgage together. So the dual income situation helps. Mm -hmm. I'd love to get to 20% as quick as possible, but getting in the market is more important than fully avoiding PMI. It makes a difference. It, you know, it essentially... If you mathematically think about it, it makes your interest rate slightly higher, which sucks in a mathematical way if you want to look at it like that. Um, and also, it certainly makes your minimum monthly payment higher and in an expensive market that can make things even further and further. So just making sure that it's around, it's no higher than 30% of the household post-tax income, the mortgage minimum monthly payment. Mm. You know, property taxes, everything, right. uh, insurances and everything combined is no more than 30%. And... Yeah, as long as you can do that, then whatever that down payment to house cost ratio and interest rate is. Gotcha. And PMI, if that is there. But in terms of percentages, I'd be minimum at this time, making sure you're maxing out your Roth IRA, minimum, and then everything else on top of that. You mm -hmm. can start putting towards the house. That's where I would start cutting things from fun. Yeah. And maybe like cut it in half, which is, you know, not bad. I mean, not at all. And I mean, it's still like 600 bucks a month to just go do whatever and eat mm. out 
get drinks, stuff like that. And then, yeah, the rest just goes towards house. And then you make sure you guys are on a combined budget, you know, when it comes to that marriage situation, especially right. so you are prioritizing retirement and getting the house that we want to get. It's going to mm-hmm. be a few years, but that's okay. Yeah. Cause that's like my thing is that I don't want to like get a house just cause I can get it now. And like, Oh, before yeah. it gets more expensive than not like it. So I'm like, I'd rather wait and like, cause I, you, you hate spending money on an apartment. If like, you're not going to fully yeah. own it. Cause then you, you're just throwing money away. Absolutely. But you don't want to like get a house. that's going to end up costing you more money than of course. An apartment yeah. would. No, the amount of money you lose, you 100% lose by having an apartment yeah. for a few years is not necessarily worse than rushing into a decision. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's okay for a few years and you'll still be, I mean, y'all will be homeowners before 30, which is great. Yeah. I'm trying, so, I'm, I'm trying yeah. to convince my girlfriend. I'm like, hey, we can stay in an apartment for a couple more years. Like it's not the yes, end of the world. You should. Cause she's, she's from a more rural part of Ohio. So like their houses are cheaper. You mm-hmm. move in a little bit earlier, but like being from Cleveland, I'm like, most people go from like apartment to condo and then maybe house. Like it's, yeah. it, it isn't, you don't need to rush too much. I'm like, she needs to know she lives in civilization now and it costs money <laughs> to do so. Trust me. I've been trying to teach her. <laughs> we learned how to season chicken lately. So that's, that's a good oh one. My God, Getting there. <laughs> she mm. Kill me if that makes the cut. <laughs> Anything else? Um, I guess from what you saw, other than like obviously the spending, is there any other glaring advice you'd see of like this is where you're dying other than just, of course, like eBay Mercari? Because I'm like, it's, I know it's that your I have a problem. It's budgeting. Budgeting. Yeah, you're not budgeting. Once mm-hmm. you get your budget under control, figure out your priorities, where money should be allocated to hit those priorities. You'll be golden. Gotcha. Okay. Because I was like, I know that like, I know where my problems lie. Like I kind of knew that, but I just didn't know how to set up a budget or like how to invest. Like my biggest fear was like moving on in the future. That was kind of what yeah. I needed help with is they don't teach you that in school. <laughs> I know that like, you know, the opposite of B plus minus square root of B squared minus four C over two A is the quadratic formula. That doesn't help me get red. So yeah. <laughs> for Drew and his hammer financial score, the dings against it essentially right now is no budgeting. Then we have the student loans and not knowing the interest rates on those student loans. And then of course, you know, we're not investing. We're behind on investing. He hasn't started except for his past 401k when it comes to 23 years old. And then, I mean, it's not a big deal that he's not <laughs> an owner of a property at this point, but that does ding the overall financial score. This is obviously, you're not going to expect a 10 out of 10 at 23. But for now, with those dings, you're going to see about hammer financial score, six and a half. Um, yeah, which I think is pretty good for the age of 23. Some room to clean up and he'll get there pretty soon. So don't forget to subscribe and check out all the fun things in the description, like my Instagram and Twitter. Thanks. Thanks to SoFi for sponsoring this episode. See if their SoFi personal loan has a rate that's competitive for you through my link at SoFi.com forward slash Caleb Hammer with no impact on your credit score and no commitment. You can also use the link in the description below.